You know, there's something bigger than the border between Canada and the United States. Something that binds our lands together better than any international boundary ever could. I'm on a journey to explore that essential element, Aboriginal people. And so I'm using the border as a guide to meet as many fascinating people in as many interesting places as I can. This is about our history, our culture, and our future. Because for me, the border is not a boundary. It's something completely different. And I call it the medicine line. Aboriginal people continue to sustain their culture and traditions regardless of what's happening in the modern world. And one of the most important traditions to all Aboriginal peoples is the hunt. Now I'm headed west to learn more about one of the most fascinating, some say controversial, hunts of all time, the whale hunt. Today we're not hitting the highway, we're kind of actually missing it. We're gonna go all the way along the rugged western coastline, clear through Seattle, and into the wilds of Washington State. I'm in Nia Bay, Washington, and that is just about as far northwest in the United States that you can travel without going into Canada. And Canada's right over there. This weekend in Nia Bay, they're having Macaw Days, named after the Native American tribe, the Macaw. Now there's a whole lot of different festivities going on here this weekend, but what I really want to do, see if I can hitch a ride on a traditional whale hunting canoe. People come from all over for Macaw Days. The big draw is the ocean canoe races. These canoes are a lot like the ones used in traditional whale hunting. But first, I'm gonna take a look around. A quick walk through the marketplace, maybe even meet some people who can tell me who they are and what they bring here. Quilinson, Shushquin, Quietin, eagle that runs around the bear. And I want to say hello to you as my friend and my relative. Oh, Siam, Nostalgia. Siam means hello, my friend and my relatives. Back through the market, I met up with Polly, who told me an Inuit hunter had brought something special for Macaw Days. Polly comes up to me and says, would you like to try some whale? I'm like, okay. They have three different kinds. A dried bowhead, which was good. They had some raw whale, which was really chewy. I think if you, almost like a beef jerky, if you were traveling, you could kind of last on it as a snack. And then they had walrus, and walrus was, was downright tasty. There's a real pride here in the culture. Generations getting together to celebrate the tribe's history in dance and song. It's a homecoming. It's called Macaw Days, but you don't actually refer to yourself as Macaw. What do you call yourselves? We call ourselves Quidditch Chaat. It means people of the Cape. And that was one of the very first things that the elders taught me to say was not to call myself Macaw, to say Quidditch Chaat, so woman from the Cape. Families wait all year long to take part in the annual Macaw Days Parade. The thing I notice most is their woven cedar hats. Awesome. Of course, everything around them influences their culture. You can see it reflected in their dress and the food they eat.
Today, the macaw can no longer hunt the whale, but they have had legal whale hunts in recent history. So I knew there'd be a few whalers in town that I could talk to. And that is when I met Daryl, who was on the crew of the first modern whale hunt. And macaw utachs means I'm a whaler. It's a way of life. It's not a trophy hunt. And we agreed to go at least a year to, be, to train for it. We had to learn uh, from our elders from the north, learn from our elders here. We had to learn from uh, as uh, many places as we could, relearn uh, some of the traditional whaling uh, training portions of it. They say that there is 24 main families in Nia Bay, and we chose a representative from each family to, to be in the whale hunt. Uh, traditionally, it's always been from the chief's family that, to be a whaler, but we're just glad to have anybody to be in our canoe to, to go whaling. It's not how strong you are, it's, it's always uh, how strong you are right here. Uh, the physical strength will happen, it will, uh, it will come around, you don't have to worry about that. You just got to believe in the Creator, believe in your brother, believe in yourself. It's all about living life in a pure and honest and thankful way, thanking the Creator for what we, what we have. It's all about taking care of the people. The whale is not for us, it's not for the whalers, it's for the people. Daryl offered to take me out in his whaling canoe, and that was the one they'd used on the previous hunt. Wow. I'm in Nia Bay, Washington for Macaw Days, and local whaler Daryl has found a crew to take me out in a traditional hunting canoe. And that is what I came here to do. Here's a, uh, a song from my great-great-grandfather, Charlie Swan. It's a very special song, Zika. Went whaling back in 1999, it brought back a lot of culture from a lot of the tribes all around us. Brought back a lot of songs and a lot, a lot of different families. A sense of pride of who we are, what our culture is all about, because we were able to do this here in Nia Bay. The adrenaline, the excitement of it all was just really overwhelming. Keith Johnson, our president of Whaling Commission, he said, Daryl, sing a song, bring the guys back. Sing a song, so I sang a song and, and it brought back everybody into focus of what we had to do. After the whale hunt, I was lost, you know. My brothers were not there anymore. They went their way and it was just different. There was nothing left to train for. There's a point where your, your mind tells you that you gotta quit, you need to quit, you can't make it. But there's something inside you that, that you have to understand. You have to know that you can go faster, you can go harder, you can go stronger. You can go as fast and hard as you want and you, you just don't know it. You just gotta believe it in here. You gotta believe that you got the power, that you have the strength to do it. Glad that we're able to have it in school. Our kids get to grow up learning our language. That's why I say that uh, the kids are the lucky ones because they're gonna grow up learning how to be ready for a whale hunt. I understand that the macaw 
can no longer hunt the whale, even for cultural purposes. But I do know one thing. They respect the whale so much that it remains a permanent symbol of the culture. We never really knew what we'd done because we were so focused on just staying alive. It's still kind of crazy to say that I caught a whale. <laughs> I think I'll always be proud to be a whaler. Daryl, thanks for taking me out. You're welcome. Quasasatlo, please. It was nothing. <laughs> Quasas what? Quasasatlo. Quasasatlo. Yeah. Quasasatlo. It was nothing. <laughs> I'm headed northeast, all the way to the prairies, past Regina, Saskatchewan, to a place called Ponichi. I've been invited to take part in a traditional hunt. Of course, as soon as I get close to civilization, wouldn't you know it, I get caught in traffic. I wanted to learn more about bison hunting, but before I do that, I need to know what these animals mean to the community. So I met up with Eddie, a rancher who has seen the community's bison herd flourish right from the start. Tell me about the buffalo. Oh, we've had them here in, at this place here uh, since about 2000. The tribal council wanted to start a bison herd, so we got uh, about 12, 15 from uh, Elk Island, and that's where our herd started from. How important was it for your people to bring the buffalo back? It was very important to them. Like all the, all the five bands that were involved originally, uh, they were all very excited about bringing them back to our area. When we first got them, that winter we had, we had lots of older people come and do what they do. One morning there was this fella standing by the gate, by the gate there, and, uh, and he's praying, huh? And uh, he said he had to come and uh, thank them for bringing themselves back to our territory. In the day, everything would have been used, right? Yeah. Once mm -hmm. upon a time, everything would have been used. Everything. For in the books we got, there's 147 uses for, that they have in the bison. Huh? According to Eddie, if our hunt is successful, the meat will feed many families in the tribe. What would the traditional buffalo hunts been like? My mom's grandfather, uh, he was old enough that he remembered buffalo hunts. Uh, and he said they made big pens. That they would make kind of like uh, corrals. Mm -hmm. And then they chased them in there, then they would come and when they killed what they want and the rest were free to go. Because huh? we also found an old rubbing stone. We were like, yes, we have one here, great big one. Huh? When you look on the hill like this from the road, you can just see the top, it's only about this big. Then you get close there and it's worn down in the ground, oh, maybe two feet. And they say that the buffalo rubbed and scratched themselves around on that rock there. Huh? They have a spirit, the buffalo spirit? Oh yes, they have, yeah, very strong. Okay, if I'm gonna do this, it's time for me to reacquaint myself with the tools of the trade. I'm talking about target practice. The 54 caliber. Okay. Uh, this is an old style gun with the, with the cap. I'll put this on right here. Yeah. Now she's live. All right, just straight through the sight. Yep. yep. And uh, you see it's a peep sight back here. Yeah. And that one on the front there, you just line them both up. Pull it in, pull her in nice and snug. Nice, nice snug against my yep. arm? Yep. Right where I want to hit. We'll get out to 100 yards. Man, this has some kick to it. It takes a lot of power to hunt this giant animal. I think I was close. 
Tell me about the hunt tomorrow. What's going to happen? Well, I'm not really sure. Uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll uh, as I did this morning, I'll go out and uh, do my uh, my thankful thing there, uh, preparing preparing ourselves, uh, and I'll also ask that uh, there's more than just going to be me. That we will we'll be doing it in a good way, and uh, that we'll all come here, and, uh, uh, and we we're we're allowed to do this. With the target practice complete, I'm getting closer to the actual hunt. Just outside Panichi, Saskatchewan, for a traditional buffalo hunt that I've been invited to take part in. It's really peaceful around here. It's so quiet that you're likely to hear the bison herd before you even see them. I decided to make an offering to the herd and the hunt. And wouldn't you know it, this big guy here, he comes right up to me. These bison really command respect. 365 days a year in the elements. They live in the most severe prairie weather, from scorching hot summers to 40 below winters. I seem to get along real good with them. They've never really uh, have done anything in a sense that uh, we are a threat to each other. I uh, respect their, their boundaries, and, and they will tell you when, uh, hey, you're getting too close. They're like deer, they'll stomp their foot, they'll lift up their tail. Uh, when their tail is up, you'll best get moving. And when you uh, back off from them, you don't turn your back from them, you're back looking at them. In my mind, they're saying, hey, you know, respect me as a, as a partner here. and I headed off for the hunt. But on our first approach, we managed to scare off the herd. But then suddenly, they reappeared. I think this is a sign. Dead set? Yeah, good. Kind of, I kept worth it, he just moved around. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice one. That's an ideal shot right there. Though I've really prepared myself to pull the trigger, at this moment, it's a lot to take in. I feel confident, assured, I'll take the right shot if presented to me. The one we want or the kind that present themselves may not present himself today. But if we do it right, it usually just happens when it's over. It is up on the hill, trying to bring him around. My guide's running in right now, so we gotta kinda get down to business. We're way off the meeting path. And this is meeting something. Uh, I think this is it. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for the last 24 hours. Will I pull the trigger? Now it's here. And I gotta tell you, I'm still not sure. I've done the thing I usually do with the asking and and saying, hey, we're gonna do a kill today, and, and, and the bull will just come out and just stand by himself at the edge of the herd and say, hey, uh, it's me, you know, uh, I'm ready to go. Uh.
Wow. I feel the spirit of the bison. The excitement, the sadness, the remorse, and the beauty of such a magnificent animal. It brought me to the ground. That was a good shot, really. Thanks, guys. Let's get up there. Get a little. Yeah. Last night after we got home and uh, you were talking about carvers and your family, I saw this on my mirror and my buddy gave me this a few years ago. And I thought it would be a real nice present for you since we usually give a gift wow. to my hunters. Wow. Lawrence, thank you. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Chimikwich. I will treasure it as I will treasure the memories here as you've helped me on the journey. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to hunt here. Thank you. Again, Chimikwich. All we have around us is a gift from the Creator. And that's why as a, as a people we believe everything that's on the earth is as a spirit. I feel good that the meat will be used to feed a community. And the teachings that I've learned, they're just one more step in the path of my journey. Thank you.